Hey Clashers, we have the upper bracket final in the Castle Cup in the World Championship Edition, which means whoever is going to win this is going to get directly into the final. And we have Inquisition facing off versus ETX Esports. Starting things off with the Queen George Lalo. I would expect seeing a lot of Lalo today, but let's see if we have some different attacks in there. Cynthia is known for some Mass Hog Rider attacks, which I'm looking for it for uh, personally. And Einstein is starting things off with a nice Queen Charge Lado. Right now selected the Slammer. A lot of times you see the Flame Flinger combined with that strategy. We have the phrase in there. Headhunter is getting used as well. And we have an Invisibility Tower behind that tunnel. So he needs to be careful for that. To make sure that his Queen is not going to ignore that Town Hall building. For now, just taking down the defensive Clan counter troops. So, so far things are looking great. The skeletons should take, uh, yeah, they're going down versus that poison spell right there. But he has already invested now one minute of the three minutes over of the time, which is uh, quite a lot, to be honest. So, minions are trying to do their best. 20% achieved for one minute and 10 seconds. There is the freeze now, making sure the queen is staying healthy and especially. The invisibility tower is not going off. That's amazing. King is funneling the queen further inside. He wants to wall break in between the two multi inferno towers. This is how it looks like because if he's wall breaking here, right at the clan castle, he can reach the monolith. He can reach that multi inferno tower at the bottom side, at the top side. Everything can be reached from there, which is a uh, yeah, huge, huge deal for this type of attack. Where's the wall break happening? There we go. Two wall breaks actually. Where's the second wall break going after that? No way! There's... Oh no. That's what you... Oh. That's what... Why did he play two wall breakers? No way. Only one wall break was needed. The second one was completely wasted. And with that he cannot enter that clan castle compartment. He can still reach the Inferno Tower which is... Strange base building I guess. But the Queen going down in her ability if I saw that right. Which means this Lalo is completely on their own. No heroes left except that Warden following a couple of loons. And this has turned bad really quick. Really unfortunate. Using a wizard to lure all of those healers into the red mines. And it looks like this is the first attack falling short. The wall breaks. And the queen going down through her ability was a big problem for him. And with that being said we have a... Yeah, not the highest percentage overall either, which is a really solid defense for ETX Esports. They're looking great with their first defense, but that's always something which is really important. If you're having a great defense, you need to like need to use that in offense and turn this around because if ETX, ETX Esports is getting a worse percentage somehow, this defense is not worth anything. Kingsman with his Zap Titans, and he's bringing quite a few of them, five overall. In this army composition, like normally you only bring four, if I remember correctly. Either way, he is going all out with those five, which means a lot of power, but less supportive troops overall. There is the Hog Rider. He is going to use the Warden to take down the first ground expo, and then most likely going to use the lightnings to take down the second ground expo or maybe the monolith who knows we have to wait for that what his decision is looking like but for now one walk looks great the defensive queen though is starting to shoot at his owl is that going to be a problem not really warden stepping forward is that going to be a problem at all does not really look like it the warden is staying healthy for now stepping closer to the queen but that queen is just staying away which is amazing for him right now and especially with the splash now, it might be the case that that's, that uh, ground expo is going down as well. The Titans are tanking now for the Warden. Perfect timing right here for Kingsman with this attack. Queen is going in, Titans are going in. Everything looks amazing. There's the jump spell now, leading everything into the back end of this base. We have a Hound Clan cast, which is even better for the attacker because the Hound is going to pop within a couple of seconds. And the pups are getting decimated right away. The town hall is going down at the same time. And take a look at that. Even the ground expo is taking damage because it's so close to that town hall building. And with that being said, every titan is in the middle of the base trying to jump from Inferno Tower to Inferno Tower. While the queen is trying her best to take down the defenses around that. 
Ground Expo went down, which means the Siege Machine is unstoppable at this point. There is no Mortar on the right side, there is no Expo on the right side. The Monolith is already down by a long shot, which means this attack is looking amazing for Kingsman on this one. Queen lost her ability, but she still has a couple of healers on her. Royal Champ is in the mix as well. He still has a Rage spell to use, so he could Rage up the healers if he wants to. The Warren is following. The Rage now instead invested for the Royal Champ to take down the defending Royal Champ a little bit quicker, which should be amazing. And we have those Clan Castle troops now coming out as well in 30 seconds. Guys, this is going to be the first race of this match. ETX Esports made really good work of their amazing defense and turned that in an even bigger lead with three starring on their own. What a great attack to start things off for them. And they're looking forward to get into the upper bracket final. But that's still a long way. Simon now for Inquisition and we have a Titan attack on their own as well. The question now though is, is this going to work? Where is he going to use the lightning? Because take a look at that. Take a look at that tunnel compartment. That is looking wild. We typically see always the Rage Tower on the opposite side of that um, town hall. But this time around we see all of the Expos with another Rage Tower really close to the town hall. Which is um, looking like a big threat. I think the Titans are not going to have a lot of fun. They're not going to have a lot of fun at all in this tunnel compartment. I'm wondering why there is not going to be a super archer blimp. I feel like with so much value on one, um, or like in one part of the base, this looks kind of promising, but let's see what Inquisition and Simon can bring to the table. They need a three star, they need at least a high percentage to stay close to the performance of ETX Esports so far. That would be amazing. The Titans are in. The Ice Golem is tanking nicely. Can the Ice Golem stay in front to make sure the Queen and everything is getting frozen? Not really sure what is getting targeted, but it looks like it's the Titan getting targeted and not that Ice Golem. But hey, that's not too bad either, which means the Ice Golem might be able to tank a couple of the Expos for a few more seconds longer. But for now, they need to follow up the jump. The jump spell was placed so far at the bottom side that the Titans are ignoring it. Now, finally, they're redirecting. The Queen is jumping in as well. The King is following up as well. There's another Rage now. Where does the Warn Ability come in? Warn Ability now? No, he's waiting for the King to go down. He really wants to make sure that this Town Hall is not having any chance of dealing any damage. But, wait a second, all of those Titans, they were not in the Warden Aura. But with the Rage up Healers, that did not matter. He could have just waited even longer with that Warn Ability instead. This is not looking too bad. He was able to get through that compartment way easier than I expected. But the healers need to stay alive. The healers need to stay alive. That would be amazing to keep those titans alive. At the same time at the top left, you can see the titans are facing off. Versus the defensive king. He's adding the headhunter nicely. Queen ability now as well. Can this work? That's the big question. He has two baby dragons. Use it for the cannon on the top right. Cannon, top right, baby dragon, come on, push those titans into that compartment. You have to do it. You have two baby dragons, use it. There's the first one. That's a nice use to push those titans inside. The queen is going to go down really soon, but 30 seconds means the time is ticking. He's already, already celebrating, and we can see it by now as well. There's just so much power left. What a wonderful attack to completely crush this base. The two baby dragons were quite interesting. Uh, he delayed them a ton. But this attack turns this match into a really close one. Tryhard for ETX Esports now in with the Queen Charge Lalo on their side. So it looks like both teams are copying each other's strategies. We had the Queen Charge Lalo from Inquisition, which did fail, which was uh, really unfortunate just with how the Queen went down, the wall breakers went and everything. Then we had a Zap Titan and we feel like we have history repeat on the other side because ETX Esports is going in with uh, Queen Charge Lalo on their own with Tryhard going for this strategy. We have the Queen going to get... Oh, is the Queen going to come back? That wall break is quite interesting. Wall break, okay. There's a black mine, but that blimp is going to get all the way. Queen is come. Okay. How in the... Wait, that was not planned, was it? I. Is this going to plan right now? I am confused. I am really confused because... He wall broke on the left side as well and now on the bottom side like I'm not sure that blimp was a really big question mark to me as well. So let's see how this is going to keep going but 
The Queen has to go to the Monolith, otherwise this is not looking good for him. There's a lot of damage and the Queen is not going behind that Town Hall. Instead, the Queen is staying in front of that. She cannot reach that Monolith now. And we all know how that ends, right? Like we all know that this is not the optimal thing for the Queen to have. Not being able to reach a Monolith. They are just so, so scary. First, those Queens. Queen is taking down the Invisibility Tower. That's nice. The King is funneling that Queen back into this compartment. There's another wall break. The wall breaks are great. The question though now is, with only one minute on the clock, is this going to be even a difference maker? Right? Can he even get to the stage where this wall break is getting useful? The queen ability is getting forced. The loudest at the bottom side in. And he has a double, triple Inferno Tower, multi Inferno Tower setup with the rage in between on the back end. I have no clue how that should work. He has only one phrase. He has to save the Warn ability as he's getting into the back end. Otherwise, this is never going to work. He is using the Warn ability early. And now as soon as the warning ability is going to run off, those loons are getting melted in between of all of those rage towers, maybe. Okay, backhand freeze is delaying things, obviously. Can he overpower this with 40 seconds? Can he still make that work? The rage tower now is still with the motor inferno tower doing his job. The king is raged up as well. The king raged up, dealing just so much damage. The inferno tower is not going down. And with that being said, oh, it is going down, but a bit too late. Or can the queen save this? The wall is open on the top side. It's going to be a way higher percentage. That's the first thing, right? It's going to be a way higher percentage than the queen charge lalo attack from Inquisition. But it's not going to be a three star. It is actually going to be a time fail, which uh, I did not expect. Like this lalo went way better than I would have thought. He has a couple of minions left and archers and everything. He's placing them to get one more beating, but it's not going down. And this is a 92, 93 percent two star for ETX esports. Stefan for Inquisition with a ooh, super archer blimp. Oh wait, there's a poison tower, buddy. Wait, what is he doing about the poison tower? Is he just ignoring that? I mean you can land into the into the poison tower, that is no problem. But he just decides to land a little bit earlier. He has the wall breaks in there so that should be no problem. But now the question is can those troops get cloned further in there? The clone is nice. Are they going to switch to the Ice Golems and run out of... Oh, one Archer is leaving, but the tunnel has to go down. That's another invisibility. I am not seeing this tunnel going down. What happened to all of those clones? Is the tunnel going down? Maybe. That would be that would be massive if the tunnel is going down, but the Rage is running out. No way. The, oh, that Rage was just way too early. If you are using this combination with a double clone, you need to delay your rage spell. Otherwise, exactly that is going to happen. The rage is running out, and this leaves your super archers without any power towards the back end. There's a double builder hut as well, repairing things. And this town hall is getting repaired back up, and he has to invest now all of his heroes to turn this around. This is looking really bad for Inquisition, and Stefan somehow has to turn this around. He has the Titan, he has the troops to turn this maybe around, or at least get the town hall right but having to face two more time towers after i am not sure if this is going to work let's see he got decent value with the blimp but that that town hall not going down was, was the big big problem for him king is doing great job the warden tanked a couple of those shots as well the queen now going around trying to tank for his queen with those loons which is a nice idea but the queen's getting targeted no it's not getting targeted Taking down that monolith, that is nice. Town Hall though, shooting at that queen. He has to delay that queen ability as long as he can. The Town Hall though has to go down. Remember, if the Town is not going down, that's a big problem. There's the queen ability. Can the queen take it down? Queen, couple of shots. Town Hall should go down. Maybe, maybe. Yes, the Town Hall's down. That's the first big part to get the save two star. And now the Lalo is not going to be as he planned. You can see the disappointment, disappointment by him in the face cam, but... Oof. That blimp was risky and it did not pay off. He could have cloned more aggressively into the into the direction of the tunnel. He could have easily done that, but instead he cloned just in the same place, like not in, like into the tunnel direction, which leaves him with a again low percentage two star. So it depends back on ETX Esports what they're going to do. Synthy with his mass hog riders. Let's go, Synthy. Show us the way on how to do it. We have the Skelly Donut, that's for sure. Now, wait a second. Do I remember this base correctly? I think 
I think the far side, the side where the mortars are, is completely baited with spring traps, if I remember cor that correctly. I think they're usually space already, um, but let's see if I'm right or not. But I think we have seen a similar attack already for this base, but come on, is this the base? This would be an amazing defense uh, for Inquisition if that's the case. If not, this could be possibly another three star for ETX Esports and they could pull ahead even further. He needs to take down the tunnel now with his heroes, that's most likely the plan. And then he's going to send his hog riders in from the far right side or the other option is then from the top left side. But based on people liking to take down the eagle early on, especially with those type of attacks, this might be a thing. We have the king versus king and the queen right at the town hall location. We have two bomb towers taken care of. This plan looks quite obvious, especially with the rage tower on that town hall side. The question now though is, is this baited in any way? No testers so far are coming up on that town hall side, which means they could be all on the opposite side. No traps on this side just yet, which could be a really good sign for the back end. Now the first skeleton trap popping up. The king taking down the town hall with the queen together, and now the hog riders have to get unleashed. Where is he starting things off? He's starting things off at the top side. Ground skeletons are coming in, but there is no spring traps just yet. Defending queen taken care of. We have more. We have more ground skeletons coming up. There's just so many of them. The heal spurs are getting placed quite early. There's so many skeletons hopping around. The royal champ has to clear them all with that lizard on the warden together. There is no spring traps just yet. I guess I was right with all of the spring traps on the right side, but Inquisition did not predict that someone could come in from the top side with their hog riders. But still, there's a lot of damage on the back end with those multi inferno tower mortar setups, everything. But is this going to be enough? It looks really good for Cynthia. He's just the master of the hog riders. And this could be another three star for ETX Esports. And this would push them really far ahead just on the percentage level already as well. And as well, we can see there is just no spring traps getting triggered at all. And. <laughs> We, we, we see the celebration. There is the bombs and everything, but that is just too late. They were expecting <laughs> they were expecting the hogs from the different side, and that has cost them. Inquisition in next, and we have a Lalo attack, and we have ooh, another Super Archer blimp. Is this going to work? The Hound is tanking, the blimp is flying, blimp is getting taken care of. Okay, there is the early open. This time around, he has two rages, okay? So two rages, only one clone. If you're wondering, what is the difference? Like, what is the difference in power, maybe? The answer is kind of simple. So the difference in power... Oh, he's using the invisibility, I think, quite fast. So the difference is, I think, that you can outlast invisibility towers. This is, like, the biggest difference. Because you have more invisibility spells, you can have, like, one clone as, and you have, like, one rage more, which means if things are going wrong, you have typically another rage which you can use somewhere different, so it's, like, a nicer backup plan. At the same time, though, I feel like it's a bit less power overall with having only one clone, but it can for sure work either way, depending on your preference. But he got the value I think he was looking for. Surprisingly enough, he did not take down the multi inferno tower. I guess he was hoping for that. And another thing which I'm surprised about is that he did not open the balloon further next to the town hall. But maybe that was just based on how he wanted to, to have things getting cloned. Who knows? The queen though, where is she going next? That wall break was too late. The wall breaks are not working as planned. The queen is going to be stuck right here. The plan looks amazing in the first place. But oh, never mind. That wall break going down is amazing for him now. But oh my goodness. This is going to be a lot of power. We see that as the face. There is the Warden with the Lalo going in early on. But Royal Champ. Where is the Royal Champion? Royal Champ is, I think, in the Lalo mix as well. There is the multi inferno Tower in the core. And remember, there is a Rage Up multi inferno Tower on the back end without any spells to engage versus that. I feel like this is going to fall short just based on that. Red Mines are coming up as well, which are giving him a really rough time of even getting that first multi inferno Tower out of the way. Russian ability can be still used to take down the scatter shot. That's what he's doing. There's the headhunters are coming in. The headhunters are trying to take down the defending royal champion. It's working. But again, everything is relying on this back end. The multi inferno tower in combination with the rage tower is looking not good for him. We can see he's already not happy, and we can see why those loons are getting melted. 
inside that Wu-Tang Fire Tower. This is getting wrecked right there. And with that being said, this is going to be another defense. ETX Esports are looking unstoppable in this match. They have one 3-star already. They have already one 3-star ahead. There are, uh, plenty. there are plenty of percentage ahead already as well. So let's see what they're bringing up next. If they're going to get a high percentage of 3-star, this match is going to be nearly impossible to get turned around. But everything relies on those next attacks. Let's see what happens. Amiolin is in with a weird mix of different troops. We have the Lightnings first. He's taking everything out at the bottom side. That's already looking good. And then we have a Golem. We have a Yeti in the mix as well. We have a Bad Spell there as well. So now let's see what this is going to be. The Golem on the right side. Okay. We have the King on the bottom side versus the Defending King. And we have the Queen. We have only one wall break. So the queen is supposed to take down the multi inferno tower or is she supposed to take down the no she's supposed to take down the no the town i was expecting the town but he did wall break in early which means the queen cannot reach their town hall so the town hall is left for the lado the multi inferno tower and the royal champ is going to be taken care of with that queen and her ability that's exactly what is happening. The king took down the bottom side. This is already looking really, really solid with the value he has set up with his with his troops and everything. And he's taking care of the top air defense. If you're wondering now why he's doing that, he just wants to make sure that, well, traps are getting triggered for that blimp. And this blimp can safely land onto that tunnel. It's going to be like a sneaky goblin blimp, right? Like this is going to be the safest option to approach that. A lot of from the bottom side with the warden together, hound in there as well. Headhunters in there, raid spell, and now the warning ability perfectly used to make sure that even the hound is getting covered. And all of those first traps which are coming up are all getting blocked by this warning ability. The warning is just so, so strong if used correctly. There's the phrase. He has another phrase for a back end if there would be anything on the back end. But I feel like at this point, everything's already down. He only needs to make sure that he is using one minion on the bottom right, like on the elixir collector. That's exactly what he's doing. This is looking crushed. ETX exports should be pretty much guaranteed in the upper bracket final. And they're looking strong, taking down all of the upper bracket contenders like Navi already, like Inquisition. And they're waiting for whoever is going to survive that lower bracket. But wait a second, there's two more attacks in this match. So let's see what they can bring up to the table. Entertain us, give us some nice ideas for strategies. But for this one, it's a crushed base, really cool attack, and Alm Yolin is adding another 3-star on the list for ETX Esports. Wait, we see Super Dragons from Inquisition now, a Queen Shore Super Dragon attack? That is looking wild. I mean, we have seen already in this tournament plenty of Queen Charge Electro Dragon attacks, which, uh, let's see if I was to do the video, if there is going to be the video at some point. Um, for me, where I'm trying that in Legends, that was used a lot in this tournament already. But now, Queen Charge Super Dragons is in the mix as well, which is going to be interesting. Typically, it's getting used when there's a lot of buildings, like, really close to each other. But I feel like a lot of those buildings are not touching each other, so I'm not sure why he's deciding to go for the Super Dragons instead of the Elected Dragons. Let's see how that's going to turn out, but as long as you can take down the pathing, which means, like, as long as you can create that pathing, actually, on the, on the, on the two flanks of the Town Hall with your Flinger and with your Queen, the Super Dragons are just getting pushed into the Town Hall, trying to take down as much behind the Town Hall Let's wait for that. We have the first rage happening. We have the super dragons in. We have the loons and everything set into the town hall. With the pathing getting created on both sides as we said. The queen should charge into this top side. Now the super dragons are getting pushed into that town hall. We have them already losing quite a few hit points. There is the freeze. No way the invisibility tower is going off. And this is obviously not good. But wait, no what? The town hall went down because of the rage tower, I guess? That was wild. How did that town hall go down? Either way, we have now the super dragons. Like, they just died out so quick. Royal champion into the clan castle. Big surprise. Poison is missing everything, unfortunately. But we see those super dragons. I mean, I guess maybe there's a reason why we don't, super, we don't see super dragons that often in the pro play. Who knows? But 
Royal Champion trying to take down the multi Inferno Tower. That's the reason why he placed the Royal Champ there to save a couple of those healers. And this strategy is really strong on the back end, right? Like, it's not about, like, how much value the Super Dragons get. It's about how much value the follow-up can get. And this is this base, you can see it slowly but surely, is getting decimated. But that Monolith is looking like the big, big problem for him. Royal Champion ability taking down the Eagle. And this attack, you might have looked like, might have thought, okay, this attack is looking horrible around the town hall, but this attack is typically getting way further than you might expect. And that Monolith is going down. King, though, is not going to finish up the rest of the base, but who in the co let me know in the comments, who of you would have thought that this attack, with the Super Dragons dying out so quick behind the town hall, would finish on like around about 90%? I think no one would have thought that. So this attack can be just really, really strong. Um, if the base fits for that, but on this one, I guess there were just too many traps around the town and the super dragons that were just going down too quick, a little bit too quick for this attack, which means it's another two star. Bases of ETX esports are just too strong. And with that being said, we're going to see another attack of ETX esports next. Ariam is in, and we see, uh, what in the why is he okay? An air spam attack with dragon, dragon riders. And Inferno Dragons, interestingly enough. Okay, is it going to be a Super Minion Blimp? That would be my guess, and yes, indeed it is. There's the clone, there's the rage, there's the invisibility, just to make sure they're taking down everything needed. What a value. Oh my lord, this is amazing value right there. Can they even take down the Queen? That's the next question I would have. Can they take down the Expert as well? Like that defending Queen is... Even the Queen... What is that value? Are you joking? Area completely taken down all of those buildings around the town hall. Town hall itself, Rage Tower, Monolith, Queen, Ground Expo. That was crazy, crazy value already early on. Now the question is, can he keep those super a little bit longer alive? Because they're they're doing quite a bit of damage, right? So keeping them alive is a nice support. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's adding the dragons early on. The final of his heroes are going to be placed around the bottom side in just a second. With that being said, he's pushing in behind the sweeper, which is pointing towards the bottom side. Queen in, king in, wall break already happened, so the heroes, those heroes can access the bottom side really nice and easily. He has another rage for the core, and this is looking really good. Warning ability now, as he's engaging versus the raged up Inferno Towers, remember, raged up Inferno Towers are not only a big threat, to like Lalo and so on. There is well a big threat to a dragon attack as well. Take a look at that. Those dragons are losing so quickly their hit points in the core with just having to face multi inferno towers. It is really, really insane. So the freeze is happening as well. We have more dragons and everything going into the back end. We have the Royal Champion. Where's the Royal Champion? The bottom side around the king. The defending queen. Since she is down already, that Royal Champion is not having to worry about um, Oh, too many things, especially with the ground expo going down as well. And things are looking really good for Area to get another three star on the board. And ETX Esports making Town of 15 look easy and going into the upper bracket final. Going to the final overall. That's the better word for that. Going to the final overall with a really dominant showing. And they're now waiting for whoever is going to come up through the lower bracket. It's either Inquisition. Might be as well Navi, who knows, or Clash Jams. Let's see who's going to make it. But for this match, GG's to both teams. What an incredible showing. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, see you tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye.